At the end of last year, I made a video trying out many different options to Adobe's Lightroom. And I thought I'd make a follow-up video now that I've finally pretty much settled on the best one that works for me. And that would be On One Photo Raw. Now, if you did watch that video, you might be confused because On One Photo Raw wasn't actually in that video. But that is only due to, well, I forgot. But I did test it out around the same time as the others, and I had as little experience with that as the others. So it was supposed to be in that video, but yeah, like I said, I just forgot. Anyway, let's check out On One Photo Raw and see why that one became my daily driver. Okay, now first off, this video is not sponsored by On One in any way. So, yeah, all the opinions are mine, etc., etc. Nothing has been paid for. But On One has a lot of features. You can see the full list on my sides right now. I'm not going to go over everything because, to be honest, I don't use everything. I'm going to be focusing more on the ones that impact me and my workflow and that I have pretty extensive familiarity now. And also a lot of these features are not unique to On One, but I just wanna go over how On One does them or how it works in On One. Starting with organizing. Now On One does offer you plenty of great simple features to help you with your organizing. You have a lot of different kinds of tags for organizing. Browsing your folders is a breeze and just, just look at this UI. It's simplistic, it looks good, it is a joy to use, and you never have to wonder where something is. When you need something, you can find it, easily. When you don't need something, it is not in your way. Big points for On One for that. Also in terms of organizing, I can open up a folder that has hundreds of images, and all of those previews will be up in no time, I won't have to wait for long and the program doesn't get any slower. It's just, it's just a stark contrast to what I was using before, if you remember that video. Searching for specific images is easy, very simple, and of course narrowing them down by your search. You also have an advanced search that lets you do very specific uh, criteria searches across all your images, but I don't really use that. So, you know, it is great to have that feature. I just, I don't know much about it. But once again, just, just look at this UI. Look at how simple, clear, just, it is so good. On One Photo Raw looks like it's a photo editor from 2022. Unlike a lot of its competitors that look like they're straight from the 90s or just like 20 years old. So when you go to an image to edit it, once again, all of your tools are just there, ready for you to use them when you need them. Nothing is thrown at your face. You have your basic controls all ready to go, but nothing more at this point. Now also at this point, I would like to point out that as you surely saw from the list of features, On One has a lot of AI powered features. Now in my experience, some of them work really well, some of them okay, some of them are just terrible. I mean, just, just, just look at this. Yeah, but the ones that work, work so very well. And it's, it's insane. And of course your results will vary from image to image and what kind of stuff you're using. But most of the times I've tried the AI tone adjustments what I got was, well, that. When you go to On One's noise and sharpening adjustments, you can find another AI feature, the no noise AI. And this, this works so well. It is a life saver for me and everyone else who is using maybe not the top of the line cameras. Like all of my photos so far have been shot with the Sony a6000 with the kit lens. So noise is a constant headache. Even, even when you're 
a little below optimal shooting conditions. The lens and the camera just bring out a lot of noise. With no noise AI, I don't have to worry about that. It does such a good job of dealing with noise that my images just look better than they would with any other software. Just, it, it, it works so well. On One also has support for a lot of different cameras and lenses, so the lens correction, I've never actually had to even touch it because, well, it supports the kit lens to a Sony a6000, so it just automatically corrects it. Works perfectly fine, I don't even have to touch it. But moving on from your basic adjustments in the Develop tab, going into Effects. Now this is where the magic happens. So in here, you can find your HSL, split toning, vignetting, blurs, whatever you're looking for. But you need to bring them out yourself. So you don't have to scroll a huge list of different features and toggle them on or off, or just have a hard time navigating the menus. They're there for you to use them when you need them. Fantastic. And the effects tab also works on a layer basis. So once you add one filter or effect, that is now on a layer. Once you add another effect, that is now the topmost layer and will affect anything below it. So if I add a lot to this picture here and then I throw on a vignette, now that vignette is applied to an image that has a lot in it. You can see how that looks. It looks what you expect. Now, if I take that vignette layer and I put that underneath the LUT, well, now that LUT is also affecting the vignette. And that just opens up a lot of possibilities for what you want to do. And you can just add more layers, more effects on top of the same effect. So you can just get the exact kind of image that you want. It just works so seamlessly and so well. And every single layer you can mask to your heart's content. I'll get into masking a bit more later, but just know that every single layer can have a mask applied to them. Genius. After that, you have your filters. So first of all, you get your sky AI, sky replacements. It works okay. You have a lot of different presets, different kinds of skies, different categories of skies, more adjustments to each sky. It detects it okay if there's a clear like horizon line, but if you have anything like a pole or a sail from a boat, it will mo there will most likely be overlap. Of course this can be cleaned, but it's too much of a hassle for me, but I don't use sky replacement that much anyway. But if you want to use that, it's here. From there you have your portrait AI. So anytime you, you're dealing with an image that has a face in it, you can click on portrait AI and the AI will find faces and then give you plenty of enhancements that you can do to that face. So you have your skin smoothing, blemish removal, all of that. It works fine for most cases, especially when it's like a real portrait, so real close. For that, it works just fine. When you're a bit further, it can easily get a bit weird. Also, you can add more faces afterwards if the AI doesn't find the face, which it usually doesn't if you have like a like sunglasses or something that is even slightly obscuring the face, the AI is just gonna, nope, out of there. But you can do that separately. You can add your, add a box and you force it to find a face. And then you can, of course, modify that mask to better suit the face. From there, lastly, you have your local layers. So this is where you can do all of your final adjustments. This is pretty much the place where you add your masks, your gradients, your, your specific area adjustments. Now the masking tools, you have a few options. So you have your basic brush, you have your basic linear gradient uh, stuff, and you have your basic pen tool. So you can create your mask with point by point. The fourth option is your AI option once again. How it works is you paint the areas with green that you wanna keep, like 
if you have a subject, you paint your subject with a green uh, line going around the area. And then you take your red brush and you paint the areas that you want to remove to not be in the mask. When you hit apply, the AI is going to try to recognize that, okay, you wanted this saved and you didn't want this. It, it's not perfect, but it works pr pretty decently, but it's very easy to refine that selection. So it just, you can get it easily working with a little bit of adjustments. Now, before we move on, if you're liking the video, please go ahead and like the video and leave a comment on what is your favorite editing software. And if you think on one might be an interesting option, both of those likes and comments really matter to the YouTube algorithm and it really helps with engagement. So thanks if you're doing that. Okay, let's continue. Now, if you need to remove something from your image, like stains or people or <laughs> something in the such, you have a couple of options. You have your clone stamp tool, a healing brush, a retouch brush for small details and the perfect eraser, which basically means this is your content aware option for on one. It works okay, not the best, not the worst, but it helps. For further photo manipulation, you have a liquefy tool, a blow tool, and a pinch tool, which basically means stretch, make bigger, and make smaller. Haven't really used these a lot, so can't really comment on them. They're there if you want to use them. Now, once your edit is done, you have a lot of export options. On One also comes integrated with On One's Resize AI. Here we go, another AI feature. But this is a very good feature. You can actually make something a lot bigger than it was and still retain decent quality. So it doesn't look like it's just a stretched piece of garbage. With Resize AI, it actually looks and retains some details that it should have. So if you need to print your image on a large billboard or something in the such, this is what you can use. Now that is everything that has to do with On One Desktop. It is absolutely packed with features, but I'm not done. The ace up on one sleeve is that they have a mobile app that you can download for free when you have a subscription and it works so well. It doesn't have all the features. It doesn't have all the AI that the desktop app has, but it has a lot of the stuff that you can use to make your basic edits. It has most of the effects of the desktop app. It has all the basic adjustments that you need for a raw photo. And it just, it is so handy. I can edit it on my Lenovo P11, which is not a high-end tablet. This allows you to make some quick edits on the go, on the road, if you want to just get a few images out. And since On1 syncs your data across your devices, you can start your edit on your tablet and then finish it when you get home. That is just absolutely awesome. So all in all, I think On One is a fantastic photo editing software and a great alternative to Lightroom. Of course, if you wanna go further with your edits, I would pair it with something more specific like Affinity Photo. The price of On One is around $125 to $130 for a one-time purchase option. Just all you Lightroom fans, that is an option. And if you want to go the monthly route, then you can pay around $10 a month for the option with 200 gigabytes of cloud storage. What is going on guys? Future Lofi here. I actually managed to uh, contact on one and get you guys a promo code for 20% off anything at the website. So when you go to check out, use L-O-W-F-I-G-H. So lo-fi on your in your checkout and get 20% off. Well, anything you're buying. All right, back to the video. Why did I say the prices like that? Because I can only see the euro prices and due to well the world situation, euro dollar courses are kind of uh, up in the air and fluctuating. So they're pretty much changing daily. But what did you think of on one photo raw? Let me know in the comments below. Was there something you liked? Was there something you didn't like? I'm curious. Now, if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description so you can check out check it out through there. Of course, 
If you like this kind of content, remember to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to see more of my photography work and what kind of results I can get with On One, make sure to check out my Instagram at lofi. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. All right. Bye.